The August 8th issue of the New England Journal of Medicine contained a publication on the Phase three randomized trial of Voxelator in sickle cell disease. Uh, and I'm going to review that article slightly and uh, show the biochemical mechanism by which it works, this drug, new drug works. For ed this is for educational purposes only. It's not medical advice. And I'm David Johnson, Ph.D. at East Tennessee State University Biochemistry Quillen College of Medicine, and I teach about sickle cell disease. Sickle cell diseases are hemoglobin HBS, in which the beta chain glutamic acid residue 6 has been mutated to valine, and that mutation results in, a, in the fact that deoxyhemoglobin S polymerizes inside the red blood cells, and this distorts the red blood cells and causes them to lose their malleability. Normally, red blood cells are very malleable and go through very small capillaries, but when this happens, they sickle, and that's why it's called sickle cell disease. They take on, instead of a round uh, disc-like structure, they become sort of long and elongated and not very flexible, and so they stick in capillaries and, uh, and Consequently, when that happens, blood cannot get to the past those places where it clogs up, and tissue dies, resulting in pain, stroke, and, and lung damage and kidney damage. Voxelator reduced sickling by favoring the relaxed hemoglobin S with oxygen bound structure. That's the relaxed form. It's oxygen bound, and when it has oxygen bound, it doesn't polymerize. So the phase three double blind randomized placebo controlled trial, thus hemolysis and anemia were reduced. Lower indirect bilirubin levels and lower and fewer reticulocytes were seen. Bilirubin is an indication of how fast your red blood cells are dying. As your red blood cells die, the, the uh, heme from the hemoglobin becomes bilirubin and that level goes up. Fewer reticulocytes, as you, if your red blood cells are dying and you have an anemia as you get in sickle cell anemia, then you're making more reticulocytes to replace those red blood cells that are dying. Now, I found this paper, which was the original paper on the structure of GBT440, which is the precursor and the, the code name for Voxelator that was originally published in the ACS Med Chem letters back in 2017. And they gave the structure. They had a, they, so here's the structure of Voxelator or GBT440. And it reacts with the N terminus. Valine, not the valine that gets mutated, but the hemoglobin S normally has a valine at position number one, the N terminus. It reacts one to one at that uh, N terminus of those beta chains. So it's an oral drug. It reacts one to one, one molecule per hemoglobin tep tetramer. It partitions very well between the red blood cell and the plasma. So the concentration inside the red blood cell is 150 times that in the plasma. So this drug is targeted to the red blood cells, which is quite good, which means the uh, uh, efficacy is much better. Now here is the structure of uh, the PDB file, PDB e 5 e 83 Valexator bound to hemoglobin S. And so I found this file, which was in that publication, are loaded in the protein data bank file by uh, the authors of this paper. And I used Discovery Studio Visualizer to uh, create this model over here. And so you can see it turning. And you can see the Valexator, which is in green, and how it binds to the structure and aids in the stabilization of the relaxed form of the hemoglobin S, which prevents its sickling. Wonderful little drug, all right? So uh, now this is the end of this, Valexator, and an investigational drug for sickle cell disease. So there's, a, there's another uh, link here to another video that the company produced, and this was published in the New England Journal of Medicine and MedChem Letters. But remember, it's educational purposes only, not medical advice. Hope you enjoyed this and it was useful. Bye-bye.